Hi, it's Kim Barber here from Game Logic Design. Today, what I'm going to do is take you through a step-by-step -step guide to create a step-by-step -step interactive PDF. Now, this is just a dummy scene. We can't use any official things from other clients or anything. So, I've just created this box here, and it's going to be kind of like a futuristic kind of uh, mechanism, I guess. So, we're going to have a cog that's going to spin around, a lever that's going to pull out, um, some rods that you need to pull out or pull down in order to activate the nuclear reactor or whatever it is that this thing is going to be doing. So first I just need to set up the animation. So I'm going to be taking you through the entire step of creating this actual whole process here. So this is just a, object, a bunch of objects that have absolutely no animation on them. And I've got materials on them up here and one of them is in a null. So if I can spin this null around then you'll see that it spins all the cogs around itself. So what have I got? I've got the cube in there, so I need to get the cube out, and the lock pin needs to go in there. If you know the lock pin doesn't. So, this is what would be rotating around if that lock pin wasn't in place. Okay, so what I'm going to first do is just figure out what this mechanism is going to do and how many steps it's going to take. So, I'm just going to make an estimate of maybe, we'll say we're going to go for 500 frames here. And we need to figure out where we're going to do the animation and what the steps are. So the first step that I want to do on this is I want the user to remove this lock pin, this one here. So we're going to animate that moving out from perhaps 0 to 60. We'll go in increments of, or maybe we'll go in increments of, of about, yeah, 60. So, so it'll be, yeah, three of those. So that's what we'll do. So I'm going to... Set a keyframe on there. Now this may seem like I'm wasting your time by doing all this and not preparing this initially, but it's actually important for me to show you all these steps so you can reproduce the same sort of thing. So I'm going to pull this up to about there. And then I'm going to keyframe that there. So if I reverse and play, that comes out. So that's about right. So it's 0 to 60. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the marker view. I'm going to create a new marker. And this marker is going to be remove pin. Let's just call it remove pin. Oh, pin. And it starts at frame 0. And it goes for 60 frames. So we've just marked that up. And we're going to do a mark for each of these. Now the next one, I'm going to come to 100, and I'm going to go from, actually I can go from 80, and the next step that I want to do is I want to say we will rotate this around, and as it rotates, perhaps one of these pins comes up just for something visual to look at. So I'm going to get the null here, and I'm going to keyframe that there. And I'm also going to, and I'll rotate that round. So let me just hide that for a second. And so we'll rotate it maybe that much, 180 degrees. Actually, I need to come up to, I'm going to go to 40, 140, so 60 frames ahead. And we'll say spin that round 180 degrees and keep doing that again. So we can look at that. That's going to keyframe from there to there. Okay, perfect. And what we also want to do is at frame 80. Let's make sure we're on that frame. Uh, frame 80. And as this goes, this thing is going to come up because that's just what it does. So I'll keyframe that. And then I want to come to 140. Oh, we'll go to 120. And I'll make that come up to about, actually we'll do it on 140. Make it come up to about there. And we will keyframe that. And perhaps as this also is spinning around, maybe, maybe this blue disc gets smaller for some reason. Because it's high tech and very um, futuristic. We're going to keyframe that and then at 140. This disk here is also going to shrink a little bit and 
and maybe it will move up as well. So maybe it'll, it will move up just a little bit. So now we've got this futuristic thing. So that's step two is to spin that big disk around. And so we bring up our marker view. And we go add marker. And we call it spin disk. And it starts at 80. That's 60. So we're doing these in lengths of 60. Each of these is going to be 60. So now I'm going to go to, let's go to 160 here. And the next step that we want this futuristic thing to do is perhaps at this point the person needs to depress, or maybe they need to remove this rod completely. Oh no, we'll make them press it in. So now I do it, another keyframe. And then 60 frames from there. to 20. I need to push that down to about there and keyframe that. So there we go. And we will create another marker for that and we'll call that push green thing. And that is going to start it to start at 160. And it's going to end at 60 frames. And then what happens at this point? So the final thing that could be, um, that could happen perhaps, we'll just do one last one at 140. Um, now that that's been pushed in, perhaps this entire mechanism can be just lifted off. Or maybe this one will just be pushed away for something for some reason so we will um, put a keyframe on there and then we'll say in 60 frames so 300 for some reason this whole box could be pushed down because maybe we're in an anti-gravity situation that's been spun around and now we can depress that box for some odd reason and this will also require a camera move so that's actually not a bad idea to do here as well so we'll go to 300 and we will and we will push that down down to there and we'll do that now at frame 240 We're okay there, but at frame 300, this is where we want it to end. So we want a camera there. So we want that camera at that position so we can see this whole mechanism pulled apart. But when we get starting this, we kind of... I need to uncheck the camera there. We need to um, you know, be in a different location. So let's go to how a little bit how we had it there. And we'll put a camera at that location as well. So we've got two cameras now. And camera, we'll call that um, full view. I'm going to pull that close up. So this is our instruction manual. Remove the red pin. Spin the yellow disc. Depress the green rod. And then push the box away. And that's the steps that we're going to be doing for our users. So now that we've done that, we've set up our steps, we've put on our markers, so now we can come across and we can actually start doing the PDF itself. So I'm in the page designer, so I create a PDF, create a page, I put my 3D view onto the page here, and to begin with we want that close-up view, so I'm just going to drag and drop that straight on there. And now I want a button, I'm going to drag a button on here, I'm going to call this button just step one, because that's what I want it to be. Uh, Actually, we'll, we'll, we'll give it the names that we actually want. So, remove pin. And we'll call it, we'll say step one, remove pin. And we need a little bit more space there. So, let me just make that smaller. Make that a bit bigger. And uh, I'll just control drag this down. And I'll make a bunch of these. Step one, and then step two, step three. And we've also got a step four, which I haven't actually marked up yet. So, I need to make sure I do that. So step four was the 
box move away. So let me just make sure we have that marker set up. Markers are easier to deal with. We'll call that push box. Starts at frame 240 and goes for 60 frames. That's looking better. So that's our steps. That's our animation. Now you can think of this as maybe you're pulling the car off a tire, maybe you're changing spark plugs in, in the engine, maybe you're pulling a jet engine apart, hundreds of thousands of different scenarios, and these can all be put into PDF documents very, very easily. So here we have our first button, and I'm going to make sure that I call these the correct thing as well. So I'm going to say step one here, step one, and this one here, step two, this one here is step three. Sometimes it doesn't highlight this view, so you may have to move the mouse in here, but okay, and this one here is step four. And looks like we've got an extra button, which I can delete. And it d these don't need to be in any particular order here. This is okay. So, step one, but I might just read all them anyway because I like things to look nice. So, step one, step two, step three, step four. So, step one is going to be a button. And when the person clicks this button, we want it to run some animations. So, we want it to animate objects. And we don't actually have any camera animation. We're going to change cameras, but we're not actually animating any particular camera in the viewport itself. So we don't actually need camera animation turned on, so we leave that turned off. Now here is where I use the markers. So here I can come to um, marker start and end and marker length. What we want is marker length. So if I bring up my marker view, it's going to use the length of the marker to, to determine how long the animation goes. We could use start and end markers, where you could drop two markers in. But because we have defined it correctly to begin with, we can just go mark length. And the step one was remove pin. So I can just drag remove pin straight into there. And when it's finished, we don't want it to reset to start. We want it to stop at the end. Because we do not want that to uh, add the pin back on when it's finished. So when it's finished, the pin stays out. So that's always stop at end in this case. And we can leave these as they are. So now we come to the step two. Step two, same thing. And step two is spin disk. Oh, needs to be marker length. And stop at end. Step three is going to be push the green thing. So turn on those two. Marker length. Push the green thing. And then we've got step four. Turn those on. Marker length. Push box. Now step four, we also want to change the camera. So to do that, what we're actually going to do is we're going to come back up to step one and instead of clicking on the tag we click on the button itself and under PDF you tell this button which camera it uses it can also use a take and if you're using a take then that can also allow you to hide objects inside takes as well which is very useful but for now all we want is to change the camera so we want the initial one to be this camera the close-up we can also set up for steps two and three although it's not required because it will always stay at the same camera location unless the user rotates. But let's just do that anyway, just in case the user does rotate the scene. We're going to say these two steps also use that camera. And step four is going to use the full view. Now if we wanted, we could create thumbnails for all these by just clicking uh, render camera preview. So if I did that here, it would create a camera preview of that position. But we don't need that, so I'm just going to remove that. And that's set the background as invisible, so I'm going to turn that background back on by clicking Filled. And uh, we can also do just some little tiny touches to all of these. We can perhaps give them a little bit of rounded corners just to make it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so that's our setup there. And um, let's just see what that looks like when we export it to PDF. Come up here. First I'll save that up here and we'll go d slash temp slash nuclear reactor and we'll export that out so we exported out the scene it's exported out all the animations we can open up the file come up to options Trust this document always. Click on there. 
and there's our scene that we can ro rotate around and see what this nuclear reactor looks like. You can see we've called it step one, step one, step one, and it's all called remove pin and remove pin. We'll fix that in a second. Let's just check to see if the animations work. So we click this, removes the pin. Notice that it's not rotating, but those two animated. Next one, the pin's depressed, but it popped back up to a start position. The last one zooms in, the box goes away, but it resets because we forgot to set that as well. So we forgot a few things. Let's just go back and have a look. So we had all those set to stop at end. So step three is reset to start. So that should be stop at end. And this one as well should have been stop at end. And we'll just make sure we change those names. And this is called, it's called spin disk. This one is called, um, what was it called? Push rod. And this one is called push cube. So now we've got those. Oh, we need them to be numbered though. Four, three, and two. Hit delete key by accident. So there's our, there's our four steps. Now we had an issue with the extrude there. For some reason that extrude did not export out. So what we will, uh, it didn't export out the animation. So the animation was on the null, and for some reason it didn't work with the extrude. So in this particular case, I'm just going to turn that into an object, and we'll just come up here, and we will also select all those. Connect objects and delete. So we're just creating one object out of that. And we'll just leave that like that, and we'll see how that goes. We'll save our scene, and we will export. So, step one, remove pin. Step two, spin disk. Step three, push rod. Step four, push cube. So that's all looking good, except we didn't like this very first view. So let's go in here. We'll check that view out. Let's have a look at what this view is. Okay, so the close-up is not a close-up at all the full view. You may have renamed these around the wrong way. So we'll just rename that. Close up. And we'll change this other one to full view. And I'll make sure that's unchecked. And I'll just change those in here as well. So we have these three, sorry, these three buttons should be using close up. Step four should be using full view. Okay, so now I think we're good to go with this. Except one last thing we need to do is we want to make sure that the close up is actually the right camera for the initial start point. So we'll just drag that in. There's a rendering as well. And now I think we're finished. So let's just go file and save this. We can export it. So here is our instructional PDF for our futuristic nuclear reactor disabling sequence in space. So step one, remove the pin. Step two, spin the disk. Step three, push on the nuclear rod. Step four, remove the cube. And away you go, your ship is safe, uh, nothing's going to explode. So at any point you can click back on these, you can go through, they don't need to be clicked in sequence. They will just move to that location uh, that the camera was set to, and it will uh, start playing the animation that was set for that sequence.